What's going on everyone? Bran here and I'm about to give you the bloody breakdown on those very interesting screen posters that they've been dropping recently. Join me. So it's been a while since I've done any type of update with the Scream franchise, with Scream 6, and this is, these two posters they've released recently have been something that I really wanted to get into because there's a lot of little hints, a lot of little subtle things here that I did want to talk about with everyone, bring up, kind of give you my ideas. You all can jump in in the comment section. Let me know your ideas. So the first thing we're going to look at here is we're going to take a look at the Christmas poster that was released. Uh, for Scream, it says here it's it's Scream time in the city, and there's a lot of cool imagery here, uh, but it's not necessarily some of the more obvious things that I wanted to talk about here. Uh, there is one thing here if you zoom in on this this big poster board in the back here that says Wrongly Accused the Musical, which caught my eye immediately because Wrongly Accused was the book that Gail Weathers wrote about the cotton weary Maureen Prescott uh, murder. And for that to be brought up five films later when we've already kind of went through the whole Maureen Prescott thing, Cotton's not really a thing anymore, um, it's very interesting to see that in particular there. Are we going to have something that relates back to Maureen Prescott? Or, and this is kind of where I'm leaning, is the, is the, uh, the plot here in this film, is it going to have something to do with Cotton Weary? I have said for years that Cotton Weary is a character that shouldn't have gone out in Scream 3. Uh, and if he did, it should have been toward the end of the film because I thought his character would have fit in very well, just like Randy's uh, would have fit in very well in Scream 3. And it was just kind of sad to see him go uh, it, in what my opinion was maybe a little before his time. Um, the guy knows some things <laughs> about Maureen Prescott, about what could have been going on in that time with Billy and Stu and I just thought it was an invaluable character that maybe went out a little too soon and the fact that we're talking about the Cotton Maureen uh, deal in Gail's book again is very eyebrow raising and it definitely has my attention. Another thing you'll see right in the middle of the poster but it's a bit obscured by this Christmas tree is the fact that you'll see a stab nine sign so that kind of tells me that there's a big chance that there will be a stab nine uh, existing inside of Scream 6, which was a question because I know, um, you know, maybe it had been talked about, maybe we should get rid of Stab. Maybe, it sh you know, the, the, the plot shouldn't have to rely on these Stab films as much as they have in the past. Um, and I'm not saying that that's the case, that this is going uh, to be a huge plot point, but I think it does at least sort of prove the existence of a new Stab film, uh, even though Gail said she was going to let those fuckers die in anonymity. Uh, maybe someone else did not. You know, Gail's not the only person in the media. She's not the only writer. Uh, maybe someone else did, in fact, uh, bring to fruition the story of what happened in Scream 5. Um, uh, and, you know, there are several other little things that people, you know, kind of looked at the, the, the three ghost face uh, next to each other here in this one uh bit of the poster could potentially, I suppose, be a hint toward there being uh, finally more than one or two ghost faces. I, I'm not quite sure about that, but it's really hard to tell what in this poster, uh, and the next poster even, that I'm going to be looking at is, uh, is maybe there to be subtle hints, or is it there to just get the fans talking and excited about this film? It could be either one, uh, but I'm just putting out there, there are some very interesting things on this Scream poster. Uh, so the other poster I wanted to take a look at here is one that uh, kind of sets up a New York City subway uh, route and uh, it all starts with Sam Carpenter who has a very big, very bigger than everyone else's dot right here at the top. And if you'll notice each line, each colored line corresponds to a uh, entry in the Scream franchise and you'll see everyone that has perished in said film, uh, starting from the killers, working backward to the beginning of each movie from Sam. Now there are some very interesting things to take note of in here. Now one thing I did want to talk about off the bat is you'll notice that Angelina Tyler uh, is confirmed dead on this poster. Heartbreaking to me because I always kind of, I'm one of the conspiracy theorists that always really felt like uh, maybe Wes kind of wanted to leave in some of those uh, 
clips and instances where it gives us an idea there's more than one killer. Um, and that I always kind of felt like it, it was... I, I have a whole video on this if you want to go check it out. Uh, my whole second killer from Scream 2 video. I won't go into great detail about it here, but it, it did kind of hurt to see... Uh, basically a confirmation that Angelina's dead just like everybody else on here. I want to say thanks for giving that one cop that died in the hospital a name. Uh, apparently his name is Deputy Clay. Had no clue about that. It was the only character in the franchise. I didn't know their name. Another thing I thought was interesting was seeing Kenny Brown's name because I've seen a lot of places identify him as Kenny Jones. Uh, so it was interesting to get a, a, a confirmed last name here. You'll also notice that Debbie Loomis is there. Um, kind of... Uh, breaking up that fight over if her name was um, Nancy Loomis or, you know, something like that. Apparently, it is indeed Debbie Loomis. And another thing you'll notice here is that Kirby Reed is on the list. Now, we know that she is not dead, uh, as she will be appearing in the new Scream film. And you'll notice she has a red uh, circle instead of a white one with an X in it. And it says now that that track is closed. So, uh, you know... We already knew Kirby is alive for this one, but, you know, just putting it in there, that kind of confirms it. Now, the most interesting thing, in my opinion, about either one of these posters, me being a big fan of Stu, everyone's talking about it, I have to as well, is that everyone except for Kirby, who we now know is alive, has a small white dot. Um, however, Stu has a, a bit of a pink dot, a little bit of red mixed in there. Now, who else on this list has any red next to their dot? That being Kirby Reed, a character that we previously thought was dead that is not. Um, so I'm not one of these guys that's going to come out here and swear that Stu's coming back in this one. I feel like if they were to pull the trigger on the whole Stu thing, I would personally rather see it in a movie where Nev Campbell's character Sydney is there to kind of experience that and drink that in and you kind of have that moment. Uh, but either way, very interesting stuff on both of these posters. A lot of stuff to look into, little subtle hints. Uh, you know, it could just be things, like I said earlier, the, the, you know, the team are putting out there to get us to talk about it. Or it could be stuff that is, like I said, subtly hinting towards what this film is going to entail. Really cool posters. I uh, wanted to talk to you all about it. Let me know what you all think about these posters and some of these uh, hints or maybe just something being thrown out there to get us talking. Let me know what you all think down below in the comments section. Leave a like on your way out. Check the description section. You'll see some links to support the channel. Follow me on social media. And uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. If you're into horror, that's what we do here at Bloody Breakdown. You'll love it. Uh, so yeah, once again, with that said, I'm Bran, and this has been my bloody breakdown on those very interesting screen posters.